I want to get into conversation. There's a lot of guys that are under pressure going to next season. A lot of mm-hmm. Coaches on the hot seat, some quarterbacks that are kind of in pressure to, to succeed now. And obviously the number one guy when it comes to pressure in the entire league is Tua. He's our guy. You support him way more than you should. You on record, well, not on record because nobody recorded it, but I think you I think you did put it in the group chat. You said that he's the 14th best quarterback in he the is. league. Absolutely. That is BS. And I've anybody watching this channel for the last three years knows I've been pounding the table for Tua. That is cap. Tua, no matter how you paint it, has struggled, whether it's been his fault, mm-hmm. whether it's been the coaching staff, whether it's been front office, whatever, he has struggled. And the Dolphins, if they had taken, I mean, obviously, if he takes Justin Herbert, we're in a lot different of a space than if we dra- if we did draft Tua. Tua has to succeed this year, or he's done. At least as a Dolphins quarterback, he's done. I'm sure he can find a backup role because he's he's a good person in the locker room. He's not controversial. He he, he has a role to fill. But if he doesn't succeed this year, he's done as the Dolphins quarterback. I don't disagree. I mean. Even Tyreek Hill pretty much said it. The, the the cap for quarterbacks, I mean, not everyone is going to be Tannehill and get seven years to prove himself. Um, and even then, he really didn't even prove himself until – Ever? He, 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 he looked good in, his, in 2016 and then when he went on the Titans in his first two years with the Titans. He looked good then, um, looked, did not look good in the playoff game. Um uh, however, if we're going to go back to Tua real quick, um, you know, he doesn't get – he's not going to get, you know, the seven years. No. He's going he's gonna, to – this is his third year with a coach that is for him, and this is it. And Steve Ross has been an impatient man. That's why he almost traded for Watson last year. I don't give a, a flying you-know-what to whoever can say otherwise that it was Flores, it was Greer. No, it was Steven Ross. As soon as Watson became available, that was who he pounded the table for. He stayed away like he said he was going to do until that happened. And then that kind of bombshelled the team uh, last year. And not just that. And then you move on to the offseason and they try to get Tom Brady again. Mm -hmm. And again, it fails when the the Brian Flores lawsuit comes out. So they had really no choice but to support to it. And they have done that. They've given him the offensive weapons. They brought in Tyreek Hill. They brought over Cedric Wilson, Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert. Got themselves an offensive coach. Gave him a better offensive line, Connor Williams, Turner Armstead. They've done the right things to support him. Now it's time for him to succeed. And is the situation perfect? No, because you do have a rookie year, a rookie head coach that you know we think is going to succeed, but he's still a rookie head coach, unproven. We don't know. There are some other circumstances that. You could give him give him a little bit of excuse. The the offensive line walls improve is still PFF 20th ranked offensive line, still not in the top half of the league. But you've done so much to support him this year. You've seen enough from him to question the last few seasons whether it's worth moving off of him or not. Now it's at the point it's on him to succeed. Not everybody's given a perfect situation, and he's been given a lot here. So if he doesn't succeed, that that that's gonna, that pressure is gonna be too hot. And you know what? He but he's always been the guy that keep a cool head and not really let the moment get to him. Uh, and like you said, we've seen we've seen it, the glimpses of just mastery of of him being able to do what he did in college. But it's not enough. He needs to do that on a consistent basis. I think he can with an improved offensive line. And like you said, we we think. Mike McDaniel is the guy for Tua. However, he's never called plays before. He's been a part of the game plan. He's He was the offensive coordinator, but Kyle Shanahan is the one that called the plays. Mm-hmm. So how is that going to work out with Mike McDaniel calling the plays for Tua? I know uh, there's – Mike McDaniel said in the press conference that he's been on the walkie-talkie with Tua so they can get how uh, he sounds in the helmet and everything else. They can get that down packed make sure everything gets across clear as day and everybody is kind of like behind to it. I mean, Tyreek Hill has been a massive supporter throughout this entire off season. Um, going as far as to say he's the most accurate quarterback in the league, which I don't believe that's true either, but I, gotta I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it's not true, but I haven't seen it to be true. Yeah. They've done, they've done it on the field 
with all this support, they're doing it off the field by supporting him that you have no choice. You really, really have no choice. I hope he works. And we're going to talk about the Dolphins a little bit more later. I really hope he works. But if he doesn't, it's going to be bad for him. Mm -hmm. Another guy is going to be bad for if he doesn't succeed. Mike McCarthy, coach of the Dallas Cowboys, was really spoon fed the first majority of his career, having Aaron Rodgers, having all that talent and only won one Super Bowl and a lot of questions we made of him. You look how the Cowboys season ended last year. It really does paint the picture of Mike McCarthy's career. Decision-making issues and time management issues. That's how, of course, they lost the playoff games to the 49ers. The division isn't always going to be this bad. The Philadelphia Eagles have done a lot to improve over the last few years. They now have the best offensive line of football. They have a great receiving core, adding A.J. Brown from the Titans. Of course, they have uh, yeah, the Vonta Smith that they drafted last year. Washington is kind of you know nickel and diamond, putting with fixing with duct tape, their quarterback situation. Eventually, they're going to make it work. The, the Giants just got a new head coach that should work. And if they choose to move off Dan Jones or if Dan Jones works, I do believe the Giants are going to be going in a good direction. The Cowboys aren't always going to have this easy of, the, of a time in the division. And Mike McCarthy did squander their time last year. He won the division. However, losing the first round of the playoffs, Mike McCarthy has to be on the, the hottest coach going into this year in terms of on the hot seat. I 100% agree with you. I, I And there was reports that he might even be fired this offseason in favor of Kellen Moore. Uh, but I think that Kellen Moore decided that he was a little bit uh, needed more experience to, before he goes to be a head coach. He did have interviews with other uh, teams, of course. Uh, but, I mean, that he's right there knocking on the door for Mike McCarthy's job. Uh, and then you have to also figure how is he going to fare now that they lost Amari Cooper? They, they lost Cedric Wilson. Yeah. I mean, they have Zeke who they're paying a lot of money to. They have Dak who they're paying a lot of money to, but I think we can both agree that both of those guys are overrated. Neither, yeah. neither of them are top five. Dak's not overrated to the extent you think he's overrated because that uh, conversation we had a few days ago, we don't need to get into that. Or was it, was it a week ago? Even that was blasphemous takes um this man what did you say how bad did you say he was how, like the, the amount of quarterbacks you said are better you said two is better than him that's not true kirk kirk cousins better than him if you want to argue that i can't really put too um, much of an argument about matt what i'm ryan. saying matt ryan's not better than him today um mm, i i mean i did i'm he's a top 15 quarterback no yes that, that's all that's all we need to hear he's a top 15 quarterback yeah but Dak is still a good quarterback who's won a playoff game before Cowboys have succeeded. The offense has looked nice, but as you pointed out, they lose Cedric, Amari Cooper, Lyle Collins, big piece of the offensive line is gone, but they I mean, still they have Connor Williams too. Connor, Connor Williams, and they still do have a PFF top 10 offensive line. They still have Dak, CD's an emerging talent. Uh, Zeke is, albeit overrated, he has done well in spurts. Even last year, he had spurts where he did well. Tony Pollard's a pretty decent backup. Uh, mm -hmm. Michael Parsons, defense, defensive rookie of the year last year. I mean, he was he was cr uh, clawing for yeah. that defensive player of the year. Yeah. So that team is by no means bad in that division. In that division, they're still they should should still be the best team in that division. If they do anything short of winning the division, it is a failure. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, they have to go out and win playoff games. Jerry Jones is Jerry Jones. He's an impatient businessman, similar to Steve Ross. I just brought up. If they don't succeed, he doesn't really have any reason to be loyal to Mike McCarthy other than he was the person who hired him. If Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys fail this year, Jerry's not getting any younger. We know how strongly he wants his team to win. If the Cowboys don't succeed, again, similar to Tua, Mike McCarthy's out of there. Yeah, and 100% agree with you. I, I He's not going to – he just hasn't been a good coach. And I, I said it like we can see in the offense, in the defense, that it's like it's not – it's like – it's there, like the talent is there, but it's just not producing. Uh, so, I mean, it's, you know, and that division hasn't been won by the same team twice in a row in how many years now? So, it honestly, it may be the Eagles year. The Eagles added I'm a pretty lot big of on them. I, I like the Eagles to win that division this year. That's um, a decent bet. And, I mean, the, the Giants, I think after this year, they move off of Daniel Jones. I, I, Sorry, but he's going to be a backup for Kansas City next year. <laughs> that would that would that, that that does sound right. So the Cowboys are very much in win now. Even though the team got worse, there is no excuses to be had for Mike McCarthy and the rest of the coaching staff. And 
part of that coaching staff, I can really see with Kellen Moore taking his job next year because he's a young, bright offensive mind. That's where the league's moving to. I can really see him losing his job to Kellen if the offense uh, and the team as a whole doesn't succeed. Last person I want to talk about, I don't think he'll ever be fired. Um, before I say anything, I don't think he'd be fired. Now, he does have an impatient owner, so that, that checks a box. He hasn't succeeded really much in the last couple of years. Checks a box. But he's Bill Belichick. <laughs> He's, yeah. he, he is Bill Belichick. So before I say anything, Bill Belichick isn't going to be fired. However, looking at the New England Patriots, last year they made the playoffs, of course, hurrah, hurrah, did absolutely nothing once they got there. They're very, you know what you're getting from the Patriots. And in years past, that would be, oh, they're one of the best teams in football. Now they're a team with a limited quarterback, with no vertical weapons, a cookie cutter running game that it kind of plugs somebody in. They don't really have a, a workhorse there. They don't have any good receivers. The offensive line's good. The defense is good. They lost like six or seven starters, only replaced a couple of them, and they did not get better in any way. And Belichick, we've seen him more and more as years go on, get more and more stubborn. This year, we've seen that by them not hiring a defense coordinator, not hiring an offensive coordinator. Bring back Matt Patricia, the former defensive coordinator, to be on the offensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Hiring, bring back a judge, again, to be on the offensive side of the ball as a quarterback's coach. Doesn't make any sense to me. So Bill Belichick, as he's getting older, getting more stubborn, if the results continue as they are, he might need to look towards retirement after the end of this season. And I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, I did, when you when I saw that, name pop up on your list I kind of was like yo like that's a good one it's shocking but it's it's a good one Bill Belichick obviously second greatest coach of all time stop it he's the greatest coach of all time stop um, it. I'm letting bias get, get this enough. one as long as it's admitted um but I mean as you pointed out Brady's done so much better than uh Bill has since the the divorce and it's like well was that part of it? I mean, if you look at the team over the last 20 years, it's been a major defensive team and uh, with a great quarterback, legendary, best of all time, at the helm of the offense. And it that offense was designed to, you know, be a cookie cutter. You plug anybody in anywhere and Brady will make it work. Mac Jones is not that guy. He, he, Mac, so far, he has not been. That's for sure. He needs the weapons. He had probably the greatest weapons of all time uh, for college. Uh, Devontae Smith, he had Waddle uh, before he got hurt. I mean, uh, Jamison Williams. I mean, John Mechie. Mechie. Uh, and, I mean, you're talking about those are four guys in the top uh, 40 picks. Like that's that's a lot of talent right there. Yeah. Now he's throwing to Nelson Aguilar. They just got rid of Nikhil Harry. They do they, have Devonte Parker, but how is he going to stay healthy? Like we we know as Dolphin fans that Devonte Parker, when healthy, is a monster. And so far during training camp, I I think I sent you this joke. Is like Devonte Parker looking sharp? He's getting touchdowns over the CBs, and it's like, well, what else is new? <laughs> he torches the he torches the Pats CBs every time he plays them, and it's like he like that monstrous season he had in uh, 2019. Like if Mac Jones can play like Fitzpatrick did, however win games, um, then yeah, I mean, but Parker tear or pulls his hamstring every other game. So yeah. the Bel Belichick system is very rigid. They we've seen the same thing year in year out. They have Hunter Henry, who is their best offensive weapon. John Smith didn't really come over and be the hit that he was for a few years with Tennessee. They'd spent a lot of money last year. They got to the playoffs, first round exit two years ago. They bring Cam Newton. That experiment didn't work. Now you have Mac Jones, who, you know, as Bench Warmer Brand loves to joke around, like that's that's Tom Brady's son. That's Tom Brady light. You know, he has similar attributes, but Tom Brady's Tom Brady. You're moving into a league now that Everything is so much more, everything's faster, everything's more athletic, everything's more dynamic. Look at all the offenses around. Look at look at just what the teams in the division have done. Miami, Tyreek Hill, Jaden Waddle uh, last year, bringing in those running backs, Edmonds, 
Moster, offensive minded head coach. Everything's gonna be fast, quick. We're gonna use speed to kill our uh, kill the opponents. The Jets, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson. Now Zach Wilson's going to second year. CJ Uzama, decent running back core. Brees Hall. They're gonna be good. They're gonna they're gonna compete for third place in the division with the Patriots. That's I, crazy. I, which is crazy. I'm I'm praising the Jets right now because they've had back to back really good off seasons. We don't know whether uh, they got the head coach right. That's still up in the air. We'll we'll mm-hmm. see him as as now that he has a better team, whether he is a good coach there. But the Jets have added dynamic weapons, have a dynamic quarterback. Dolphins don't have a dynamic quarterback, but the weapons are just glorious. Patriots have none of that. They don't have. They have a good offensive line. They have a good run game. Quarterback is very system oriented. And Bill Belichick, what's this going to be for the What's this going to be for the Patriots? They had some decent wins last year. They beat the Chargers, who's everybody's sweetheart. Everybody loves saying now they're going to be a Super Bowl mm-hmm. favorite. We'll see whether Brandon Stanley is actually a good coach and can actually put that all together yeah. for a late postseason run. They beat them. Bill Belichick, I am concerned that he has become a little stuck in his ways. We've seen that with so many coaches over sports history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, Bob Knight and a bunch of other guys that once it comes towards the end of their tenure, like thankfully Coach K didn't quite get that way. He adapted really well to like a one-and-done type player in college basketball. But Bill Belichick is getting stiff here, so it does kind of lead me like, to believe he's coming towards the end of his time as a coach. Exactly. Like if you look at his offensive staff or just his staff in general, Who's really innovative on that staff? They have the same guys that they had 10 years ago. Matt Patricia, Joe Judge. Um, McDaniels just left to go to Oakland. So now the guy that was there for, you know, 15 of the 20 seasons, past 20 seasons, he's gone. Yeah. And Bill, and like, Bill only hires what he knows. You have, you have to check a box for Bill. Yeah. Did you play for him? That's a box. Are you related to him? Has two of his kids on his coaching staff. Checks a box. Or does he just generally like you? Apparently he liked McDaniels somehow. I don't know how that 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 dynamic worked there. You didn't get my joke. I did not know. The sticky oh, tongue. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. You so Belichick, he's so stiff and rigid. He doesn't want to work with people he doesn't like. I, I know this is like I, this could easily be a nice sound clip, you know, later on in the season. Because the the Patriots do have an easy start to their season. If you look at their 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 first, Minus games, the first game. Minus the first game, of course. Minus, minus the first game. But they do have a decent run of things, so they could easily be like six and two halfway through the season. The back end of their schedule, though, is when things get really difficult, playing the Bengals, the Ravens, having some more difficult matchups there. So Patriots, if they do have a rough season, there should be some some just some conversations to be had in, in the room there. 